Hi, my name is Rodney Munoz. I worked at The Late Show from 1995 to 2000 in the costume department. I remember we were doing this four city tour and I got to Chicago and we were shooting something in a salon at Marshall Field. Dave wanted Mujibur and Sirigil in like neon pink colored hair and we didn't have that. So I ran out and went and bought some wigs and I got some dye and there I was in the hotel room dyeing neon pink and green wigs. I came back the next day and Dave was pretty impressed that I just did it. I was new and eager. While working there, there was a gentleman, his name was Leonard Tepper, and he was an elderly gentleman and he had some physical limitations. He had crazy costumes, and I remember I, one time I, I made this tick costume for him. So put him in this costume and he just was like screaming down the hall, like, I'm a tick, I'm a tick, and it was just like, that was Leonard's way of doing it. so fast, you bloodthirsty bastard! Ranger Day's tick color! Ah! Thank you, Ranger Dave! It was really kind of amazing, this guy Leonard Tepper, that could, he was kind of hunched back, and he could barely walk, and he moaned and groaned about everything, but the minute the camera was on, he was on. We'll get down there, Help honey. Me. All right, get down. Call 911. All right, get down. Help get down. I'm busy. Get down, Jeff. I'm disorientated. Right. I'm disorientated. Get down. I had to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I'm 49 years old. That one shot when she was getting off the chair. <laughs> I'm 49. That's the most unpleasant thing I've seen in my life. Uh, yeah. There you go. Dave's style was very New England conservative but made by an, a very Italian tailor. One day he accidentally left on his white socks and everybody was complaining about him wearing the white socks. And I, I remember thinking, well, he's never gonna go back to black socks. And he didn't, he was like, nope, I want those. Hey, you're in charge, do you, I don't care. Wear white socks, wear pink socks. I was just next door grabbing a bite. <laughs> yeah. And I saw the show and it uh -huh. looks terrific, but oh, do yourself you. a favor, will you wear these? All right. Thanks, Start dressing up, man. This ain't cable. We would clean crap out of stuff, but we'd send stuff out to get cleaned, and sometimes they'd get ruined, sometimes they didn't. We also had multiple suits in stock, so if he was doing something that we knew we were going to have to cut back to later, then we would definitely pull a multiple suit and have him wear that for the stunt and then for the real show. One morning in the news on the cover of the New York Post was this photograph of a rat eating Dunkin' Donuts and the call came down that they, Dave wanted to see how many rats we could fit inside a Dunkin' Donut. We started calling around where we could get rats, buy them, rent them, borrow them, and ultimately I think we had like 20 something. And at the same time, I wrote a list of all the other like crazy characters that we had. Batman, a Superman, a, you know, like this whole list. And then Dave, I remember Dave thought it was funny and so then we just, added all those people too. It turned out to be a really funny bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh okay, so far one. Where'd he go? Climbing the stairs. What is that? They got like a, uh, a mouse in the stairs. <laughs> okay, let's just send in uh, five more. Five more, make it 15. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey, hold it. We ran out of, we ran out of mice suits, I'm sorry. So we just... 
What is it? We have 10 mice suits. What kind of suit they is have that? 10 mouse suits. I don't know. That's the dog, a monkey, Zorro, a tick, and a tooth. That's what just. A, tooth. a tick and a tooth. A dog, a monkey, a tick and a tooth. A, a tick and a tooth. A tick and a tooth. All right, I got a Dracula, I got a Batman, I have Marie Antoinette, I have a cowboy, and I have a dinosaur. What do you think, Paul? Send them all in. Send them in. There they go. Batman, Marie Antoinette. Never works. Cowboy. It never works. There they are. There was a coffee shop across the street, and Dave wanted to see how many bunnies we could fit in the coffee shop. And I think we got to like 45 bunnies. It was just everybody. Every intern, every page, everybody had on a bunny costume. And we all just sort of marched across the street in these crazy, you know, Easter bunny costumes. <laughs> Every year for Halloween, we had kids doing trick-or-treating, and so we would make these elaborate costumes. And one year, one of the ideas was just Siegfried and Roy. I had to get some, like, flesh-colored net and then make a hairy chest for this kid. And I was, like, just remember thinking, there's something wrong with putting hair on this seven-year-old kid. Like, oh, well, got to do it. It's just another day. Another Halloween costume was... Uh, the year of Fabio got hit on the roller coaster, and so we recreated that. I made a contraption where, like, a goose was attached to his head, and we had, like, blood all over his face and all over his clothes. Oh, hi. Happy Halloween. The event captured the imagination of every child in America, so it makes perfect sense that kids are dressing up as Fabio with a goose on his face. <laughs> Daft Prom Nightmare was a bit... We were shooting about anybody had a, a, a nightmare, and I, I explained this nightmare of the prom of, on the Queen Mary. My date had too much to drink, so um, she got she pretty drunk and was puking over the edge of the boat and fell into the water. <laughs> Are you okay? I don't feel so well. Our producer called me sometime around midnight. We need Leonard Tepper to be dressed as an iceberg. Leo or Kate Winslet were gonna be on the show and that was the joke. They were there promoting Titanic. My coworker apparently got on the phone. What, this is crazy, this is crazy, we can't do that. Uh, iceberg, what does that have to do with, with Titanic? I was like. The death boat is still sinking. Won't someone come and save us? <laughs> Who are you? I'm an iceberg! You just knocked me on my ass! I'm sorry! That's okay, how about a hug? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no, a typhoon! <laughs> we had to rent the costume of Buzz Aldrin's spacesuit. And it was like ridiculous amount of money to rent. You know, it's the same people that did like Apollo 13. And part of the rental was a handler where some guy had to fly with the costume to New York. So we, we just kind of stood there as he like screwed all the pieces on. Are you excited to be here? Yes, I'm very excited, are you? I was excited that time I walked on the moon. <laughs> How many seasons have you been on Guiding Light? Let me put it this way. You were... I walked on the moon. <laughs> you know, sometimes astronauts have no choice but to urinate in their spacesuits. Ew. We did this thing where Dave wanted to create a fake band. In each boy band, they all have their own sort of characters, so we had to create looks for these guys. I remember we talked about, well, there's got to be the one jock kid, and there's got to be the one kid that's the troubled kid. And then there's like the kid that all the girls are going to love. Then there's the guy that's got the real talent, but nobody's really going to love him. People were like, oh my God, where do we get their album? It's like, just so funny. They, it was corny songs. Those were really like fun times, like doing that. Oh girl, one more chance, one more chance. There was a whole time where the writers were doing these fake musicals and we would produce them 
like it's the new hit of Broadway. Now, in hindsight, you're like, these people became huge Broadway stars. They were very successful at that point, but in later years, they, they their careers all took off. It was like fun, just getting a chance to do a theatrical musical in two weeks, and that's it. And it would just air for one song, and it was over. He's coming home, he's really coming home. Every time Bill Murray came, he required some help because he has so many ideas of things he wants to do for his intros. And one year he had this idea that he was going to bring his intern and the intern's name was Dale. And so they had to cast somebody to play Dale. And I think it was one of the head writers that thought I would be the perfect candidate for this. It was funny. I wish I'd done more. It would have been fun. Are you... What? What? Are you? <clears throat> hey, excuse me, excuse me. Dale? Dale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dale is my intern. You don't need anybody, do you? <laughs> well, uh, perhaps Mr. Letterman might like a cup of coffee. I'm sorry, Mr. Murray. Thanks. Dale, that would be Mr. Letterman. Would you like a cup of coffee then? Mr. Letterman, would you like some coffee? Well, you know, Dale, I'm, I'm fine. I have some right over here. Thank you anyway. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for asking. Okay. And now that would be leave, Dale. <laughs> thank you. Seems like a nice kid. Is he a, a new? Is he a part of the spring class of Bill Murray interns? <laughs> Dale got me this hat. <laughs> what it's, is uh, it stars uh, Jason Schwartzman as this kid who's the... Uh, as I... <laughs> stars... Talk to him later. Talk to him after the show. Talk to him after the show. I know his parents. <laughs> <laughs>